morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to 930 worship at Mount Carmel on what I believe we have unofficially designated as Back to Church Sunday. <laughs> the, you know, the summer activities have, have wrapped up and we're uh, restarting our Sunday schools and uh, you know just various various programs in the church and just excited to uh, celebrate Back to Church Sunday. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm Charlotte Worley. I'm one of the lay servants here at Mount Carmel. I'm excited to see some uh, some familiar faces and uh, welcome welcome those. And we've also got some new faces in the building. We have some returning friends, and uh, the children are um, back there with the Sunday school teachers. All excited about starting up there, and we are just. Happy to be here to worship together. In your bulletin, you will see several announcements. Um, I'm not going to go over those at length, but just kind of highlight a few things, particularly for those of you um, here at 930. I want to point out that uh, uh, there will be, we're re resuming our Sunday um, adult Bible study classes this week. If you're at 9.30, a very logical Bible study class for you to go to would be the 11. So if you would like to stay after this service and meet in the conference room to see what that's all about, I invite you to do so. And let's see, a couple of um, other things. Hope for Kids Packing resumes this week. Uh, Next Sunday at uh, both of the services, we're going to hear a speaker from, from that. And uh, let's see, Bell Choir, there's information about Bell Choir and Praise Team, looking for new members and resuming practices. <coughs> Make sure you take a look at that if you're interested. And that's, uh, what else should I be highlighting? That's good. Jeff, is that good? Let's, let's go on then. Um, I invite you all now to continue with worship, enter more deeply into the heart of worship with this morning's call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. And I invite you to uh, participate in that by saying aloud the portions that are printed in bold. We are called to love the Lord our God. We are called to love with all our heart and soul. We are called to love the Lord our God. We are called to love with all our mind and strength. We are called to love the Lord our God. And we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves. Come, let us love our God. And let us share God's love as we worship. And now will you all join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I now invite you to stand as you feel called and are able, and um, participate, sing along with the, the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful, which is number 147 in your hymn.
seated. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you remember growing up in the church, in the Sunday schools, and they and the teachers would ask you to have memory verses? And anybody have memory verses that they know even as old as we are today? <laughs> This happened to be one of one of mine, so I'm very happy to be able to read it to you. But I left it down there with you. <laughs> well, you should oh, remember yes. it. I forget. And I do remember it. But Probably I King James mistake. Version. <laughs> I don't want to make a mistake. So our reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, six verses 1 through 6. Is it 8? Four to six, six, four to six. Well, these glasses have got to go. <laughs> Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. As long as we're telling old stories, some of you too, if you went to Sunday school like I did growing up in my home church, you may have got perfect attendance pins. Yes. Did you have those here? Oh, she didn't notice. Yes. But again, now I uh, attended faithfully because my mother was Sunday school superintendent, and so I've got 12 bars for the 12 years of going to Sunday school. Um, and so today we celebrate. At the end of the service, I've asked both the uh, children's Sunday school, the youth Sunday school leaders, uh, to bring the youth and the kids in here. And we want to have time just to thank the teachers and, and pray for Sunday school. So we'll do that towards the end of the service when, when I've invited them to come and join us after class. Um, but there are a couple of things I did want to share before I get started. Last week we asked you, you know, what do you love about this church? So there's an insert in your bulletin today that kind of gives you the summation of what we got from those various cards. 
that were filled out and left in the uh, offering plates last week. If you weren't here last week, there are extra cards if you'd like to fill one out. What is it about this church that you really love? And so you can see some of the answers. Maybe that'll tease some other answers out for you. But this week, we also have a card in the bulletin. This one is asking, who in this church has made a difference in your spiritual life? Okay. So it might be someone who's here today. It might be someone who was here years ago. Again, if you go back as far as when you were children in Sunday school, who were those teachers? Or who were those people that helped with the youth group as you were growing up? Who were those former pastors? And, and just like last week, we found some people had one answer, some people had two or three or four answers. You may have more than just one person. Uh, who is not specifically singular nor plural? Who? Who all might you want to put? And there is an empty bank blank on the back side of that card, too. So depending on how many people there are, but just to think about the relationships that we have as a community of faith. Who is it who has helped make you know, your spiritual life different because of the way that they lived, the way they shared of themselves, gave of themselves, shared their faith with you. Before you leave, I want to make sure we have an opportunity to drop those into the offering plate as we pass them around. And next week, there'll be an insert listing, uh, you know, the responses that we've all shared this week. All right. Well, again, we are in the second week now of a, a stewardship campaign preparing for next year's budget and how we will be supportive of that budget with some material written by uh, Bishop Robert Schneider. And he called it extravagant generosity, noting how God is generous. And we talked about that last week as a part of that. You know, that we love because God loves us. And today we'll talk about how it is that we are called to love from what we understand as the great commandment. Jesus quoted what we just heard this morning from Deuteronomy. People who love God with their whole heart and their soul and their strength or might, depending on your translation. And so today I want to reflect with you a little bit about how it is that we love God, how it is that we express that love to God. And then, of course, Jesus added to this with another scripture passage about loving our neighbor, and we'll also talk about that. So again, from what was called in, in Hebrew the Shema, uh, which is the word for hear or listen, how this uh, scripture begins. Um, uh, similar to, I don't know, if you have some you know, Roman Catholic friends or if you've been, been in Roman Catholic uh, churches, uh, they don't say the Lord's Prayer. I don't know if you know that. What they say is our Father, because they know the prayer as our Father, which is the first words, you know. And so that's the way Hebrews kind of remembered. It wasn't by chapter and verse. It was by the first word, the Shema. Hear, listen. Hear, listen, O Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. With all your might, keep these words that I'm commanding you today in your heart. Yeah, it's a good one to memorize by heart. But it's more important to do it, right? It's not just to remember it, but to do it. And so how might we do that? Well, let's see. I suppose I skip over it. But there it is again. Just that affirmation of that listen to what the Lord has to say. So do you love God? And how do you show that love? It says with all your heart, by, by <coughs> loving, right? Today's focus is that relationships are matters of the heart. And we're talking about the relationships that we have here. Who are those people who have or who do help you as you grow in your faith? And then strength or might by your doing and I preached about this at least two or three times about, you know, John Wesley calling us to do all the good you can and how it is we put our faith into some action as we work for the Lord. And then finally, how we do it with our soul? Just by being, not doing, but being. And sometimes this might be the most difficult, just to be. Because we feel we have to do something, but we often don't. 
And so let me talk a little bit about these. Loving God with our heart. Our whole heart. Wholeheartedly. Putting your whole self in. And again, let me draw you back because you probably know it. Maybe some of you only know it because your kids know it. But how many of you know how to do the hokey pokey? Okay? <laughs> Think about it. You remember that? Yeah, I'm not going to do it up here. But you know what it is. You know, you put your left foot in, yeah, and your right foot in, your right in. But you don't remember how that ends? You put your whole self in, right? Yeah, you got to shake it all about. But I'm not going to do that. But here's what I'm going to talk about. Loving God with your whole heart means put your whole self into it. Put yourself into it. Right? Some people only love God half-heartedly. Don't do that. Love God with your whole heart. Put yourself, your whole self into it. Jump right into it. Jump into the deep end, if you will, to express that love of God. And how might we do that? With music. Yeah, well, we do that, right? We sing as we worship. We come to worship. That's a part of what we do, but we just don't come for one hour during the week. That's a very small, half-heartedly. That's, that's very infinitesimally small amount. If it's only one hour a week, that's not a lot of love. No, you put your whole self in. So what do you do during the day? How do you love God during the day? Hopefully with some time of prayer, with some time when you talk with God, with time when you listen to God. I'm a morning person, and I tend to spend the first part of my day just as I get up to begin with God. I have a couple devotionals I read. I read through the Bible, and so I'm reading through right now. I've just finished Proverbs, moving into Ecclesiastes. And in the New Testament, and into Paul's letters. Or reading the Word. Or remembering the words that you've memorized. Another good way. Putting your heart there. Putting your heart for the way you love God. How is it that we might put ourselves into being in that relationship, that loving relationship? This morning at 8.15, somebody during our prayer time just lifted up, you know, the beautiful weather we've had, and we really have, you know. Friday I had that opportunity I've been talking about for the last three months of getting up in a hot air balloon and floating up over, you know, Frederick area. I came right over the church, got some neat pictures of the church from above, and then landed out near my home in, in Walkersville. But it was just a great day, a little hazy on the horizon, but it was great looking back. And my daughters were with us, and my son-in-law. My grandsons came to watch us and wave as we flew off, kind of like the Wizard of Oz there. And there's Dorothy and all the others saying goodbye, goodbye. And sure. But one of the things I really wanted to do while I was doing that was just get a different perspective. We really did look down on the airport and saw planes down below us landing and taking off. We flew over a couple of bald eagles flying up in the sky. It's a different perspective seeing them from atop rather than from underground. It was just a glorious experience, but it was one of those bucket list items I wanted to do, and we finally did. But I just give thanks to God for God's wondrous creation. He just sang about all things, bright and beautiful. All of the experience of the changing of seasons, all the experiences of walking outside. How might you do that in the way you live your life this week? Just Give thanks to God. Show your love for God. And all that God has done for you. All that God surrounds you with. May you be a, a person who just loves God with your heart. By giving thanks and praise. Coming to worship. Singing. Reading your Bible. Well, the other thing it says is by all of your strength. And yesterday we had, I think there were 10 of us here yesterday. It did some work around the church, some in here, as I said, patching up some holes in the ceiling and dusting and cleaning, doing some other things throughout the building. We've done the elevator and fixing up some things, cleaning the chairs up on the upper floor outside, doing some work on the prayer trail. If you've not worked, walked it. I'll encourage you to walk the prayer trail and read the prayers. 
And that can be an opportunity for you to share your love of God as well as walking and getting an experience of a little bit of nature here on the property. But I give thanks for those who are doers. Uh, next Saturday, I've got a work day scheduled out at Camp Manadoka. At this point, I have no one confirmed that they're going to come with me. But if you'd like to, next Saturday morning, we want to invite you to come. We're going to try to get out there for about three hours. So if we leave here at 8.15, we'll get out there by 9, work till noon. They'll feed us some lunch and we'll come home. But I know the camp always has some needs, particularly in the spring. We get ready for summer. In the fall, we kind of, you know, close up from the summer and get ready for fall. So if you're a doer, and you like doing those kind of things, talk with me after the service so we can see how many might be able to come out, make a difference at the camp. What is it that you do? Today we want to lift up and praise the Sunday school teachers. And so after they have their class, I've asked them for the last 10 minutes if they'll come back in here and join us so that we can give thanks for all the kids, all the youth who are with us today that we don't see because we're down here. And, and for all those teachers and leaders and helpers who are in there making sure that the kids you know, have their lessons learned today. And, and just a thanks for the blessing of a Christian education here at the church. I know there were some who told me, I oh, can't get there this weekend, but I'll be there next weekend. So I'm anticipating over the next few <coughs> weeks, it'll be kind of an extended back to church Sunday. It'll be back to church month. Right? But that's okay. As people start coming back from their summer and their busy summer schedules, we'll just celebrate and welcome and rejoice. What is it that we might do for the Lord? What various ministries might we do? And I know uh, I've been meeting with the LET team, talking about all the committees and the various positions and things that are open, things where we might need a little help. I give thanks for all who are participating right now and are part of the leadership of the congregation. But we're always looking for others who might want to step up and say, I can help with that. Um, on the screen, and Charlie mentioned, you know, tomorrow night, the bell choir will start up at 6.15. The choir will start at 7.15. They're always asking for any new members that want to come out and ring or sing. What ways? Why don't you do something for the Lord? And it's not just here at the church. It's out there in the world. What difference are you making out in the world? Maybe among your family, extended family, among your neighbors and your neighborhood, at work, or just wherever you happen to be. How might you love God by loving all that God has created? Including all the people God has created. How might you share the love of God with someone? Do something this week make a difference in someone's life. And finally, of course, it says, by all our soul. Not by doing things, but just by being. Love God with your soul. For me, it reminds us that by definition, at least what I understand, we're, we're called human beings. You all aware of that, I hope, right? We're not human doings. Okay, that's not right. No, we're human beings. So what are we being as humans? Okay, well, Paul said we're to be imitators of God, and I like that. God who created us and in whose image we are made. What are you being this week? What are you being this week? Woody Allen, actor, director, quoted as of saying, 90% of life is just showing up, just being there, right? Have you had that experience when someone was there for you? I mean, they didn't have to do anything. It wasn't like, I'm coming over to your house and I'll, you know, do all that kind of work you need done. There are times when that's needed. Sometimes you just not need someone just to be there, just that support, right? How many kids are out there, you know, and active and involved in something at school, a performance or some event, you know? And we have the opportunity just to go and just to be there for them, right? To cheer them on, to smile, encourage. So you see all the kids that, that are here today as, as uh, we're part of a community of faith. How can you be there for them? You pray for them. You don't have to do anything. 
just be there for them with a smile, with a kind word. We can be the ones who experience loving God just by being there, being what God has created us to be. Beloved in the eyes of God, can you be that? Can you express that just by living that way? Not with a chip on your shoulder, not with a scowl on your face. How is it that you might live, show the love of God, that imprint of God upon your soul, despite who you are, how you live? <clears throat> Just be who God created you to be. Live your life as fully as you possibly can as a way to worship and thank God for creating you in the first place. Well, again, in our Christian context, we understand this old Shema, this old law to love God with our heart and our soul and our strength. We're with the second one that comes out of Leviticus. It's chapter 19, verse 18, and the, the whole verse goes this way. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Loving our neighbor as ourself, we know is important as well. Again, we can love our neighbor in the same manner, you know, by loving with our heart and loving with our strength and loving with our soul. And that great commandment is found in three quarters of the Gospels. Believe it or not, it's not in all of them, but it is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, because they all have a similar way of telling the story and relating some of the scriptures that Jesus quoted. Uh, John wrote a little bit differently. I think John wrote a little bit later. I think John had a little more time to reflect upon what Jesus said and what the emphasis, perhaps, John needed for whoever he was writing to. It seems to have been maybe the church in the north, church in the area of Turkey, where he was, or Greece. But here's what John had to say in chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, instead of what we know as the great commandment. He said, a new commandment, this is Jesus talking, I give to you, love one another. Sounds familiar, right? Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. It puts a different spin on it, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's, that's a good line from Leviticus and from Matthew, Mark, and Luke as Jesus quotes it. But to think about loving, not because we want to be loved that same way, love our neighbors as like we love ourselves, but love our neighbors because Jesus loved you first, right? Love like Jesus loved. And then how about that line about everyone will know you're my disciples, not because you can quote a lot of scriptures, right? Not like you walk around like you're holier than thou, but by the way you love one another. I wonder... If anybody can watch you through the week, would they have a clue that you're a follower of Jesus? Would, would they see something in you that says, there's something about that person, there's something about that person, different than everybody else. They, 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 they're loving. They're so caring. I got to know more about that. Where does that come from? You might have an opportunity to invite somebody to come and meet Jesus just by the way you love, the way you live, the way you share the love of Christ with others. But as John shares, Jesus evidently said, the people are going to notice. Oh, you might notice a lot of people out there. And many of them won't give you the time of day. I don't know about you, but my experience walking around a lot of people don't give even eye contact anymore, right? 
I used to grow up in a small town where everybody greeted everybody. I remember the good old days. You sit out on the front porch and you greet everybody that walks by. You walk up to the porch, you talk with them for a while, and then you move on. They don't even sit out on the front porch anymore. They're in the back, right? You got a boarded fence all the way around so you don't have to see your neighbors. What if we start tearing down some of those walls? Start looking people in the eye and say, God bless you, right? God loves you. How might we express the love of Christ so that people in the world will know that we're followers of Jesus? I encourage you this week to really reflect on what is said this morning about how we love God. And then do that. But even more so, how we are to love our neighbors. And do that. There might be something you can do. There might be just something you can be for them, just by being there for them, just by being neighborly to them, being encouraging to them. And maybe we can lift them all up in prayer. That they might come to know the love of God that we have come to know. They might know the experience of the grace of Jesus Christ by what we have done. How is it that we might make a difference out there in the world today just by who we are as followers of Jesus Christ, those who love one another and are so loving that it gets noticed? What might you do this week? It makes a difference in someone's life. I don't know if they're going to put your name on the card. But, you know, God will put your name on the card because God knows what you're doing, okay? God keeps an eye on us, right? And so it's great, you know, if people put down and they recognize and acknowledge. For me, it's old what's-his-name. Yeah, I, I know. There's people that don't remember who I was. But yet, I hope I made a difference in everyone's life, in each of the congregations, wherever I've served, places wherever I've been, just by being gives me an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. I often share it at, at funerals. We read the 23rd Psalm. Again, you talk about things you memorize from Sunday school. The 23rd Psalm is one of those for me, old King James Version, and I tend to use that when we do the 23rd Psalm. And the words out of the 23rd Psalm I sometimes focus on and point out to people it's just a line that maybe you say, but you don't even remember it. There's some good lines in there, right? The Lord is my shepherd. Anything you remember in there? I shall not want. That's pretty good. Yeah, right. Anything else? Green pastures. Those are great. Yeah, we landed in one of those. Well, that's all right. Um, what else? By the still waters. By the still waters, yes. Restore my soul. Restore my soul. Yes, Teresa. Takes care of you, yes, right? And as a banquet, do you remember, right, in there? And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's a good affirmation. So again, I often focus on that at funerals, because, you know, we're talking about the person who died in the midst of grief. Realize that they've gone to a better place. But the line I really like to talk about is one that you hear, one you probably haven't heard preached about or focused on, but words I think are important for us today. It simply says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then I often ask, and what's following you? Okay. It, it seems like some people have clouds that just follow them wherever they go. They're just under a cloud. There's just rain. You know what I'm talking about? They just have difficulties. But sometimes I also find that there's just some misery and some pain and anguish, and sometimes it does follow them, right? And they leave that in their wake with everyone they meet. They just feel that sense of, oh, man, you know? But there are other people that walk through this life, and because they've walked through your life, they've left something of themselves behind. They've left a legacy. What's it, maybe a million dollars is a legacy. But they made a difference somehow. Somehow there's some goodness, there's some mercy, there's some love, some grace. And often
often, as I talk with the family about the deceased, they say, what is it that you remember? Oh, there are times when they remember some challenging things and difficult things, but often they recall certain events, certain times, and there were some good things. And I want to remember and remind people, surely goodness and mercy follows us. If we live a life of goodness and mercy, love will follow us if we share that love and allow that love to linger after we have walked by. Who out there needs that goodness and that mercy and that love, that grace, that gift that you can give just by passing their way? It's an opportunity for us to live our faith and to share our faith just by who we are, how we love, as we have been loved. We'll begin with the heart cards and thinking about, you know, who has made that difference in our spiritual life. I trust there have been many. And sure, there will be some that you remember, but just don't remember their names. But you remember that people have been there for you. People have prayed for you. People have supported you, encouraged you, loved you, taught you. And today we can give thanks. So who are those loving people for you? Who are those people that have made a difference in your life? I don't dare to thank God for them today. And if they're still alive, dare to reach out to them and say, I was just thinking about you. I wanted to let you know. I appreciate what you've done for me. Well, Bishop Schnazy, as uh, part of his uh, stewardship uh, materials, shared these words that I thought were very poignant and wanted to share with you in reflection on what it is that we give thanks for today. He said, in every sanctuary and every chapel in which we have worship, every church organ, or piano, you know, that has lifted our spirits, every pew that we've sat in, every communion rail where we have knelt, every hymnal and Bible in the pew, we have used to sing and read scripture. For every church classroom where we have gathered with our friends, every church kitchen has prepared our meals, for every church cabin where we have slept, all are the fruit of someone's extravagant generosity. And we have been the recipients of grace upon grace. People long before us who, you know, built this chapel. People long before us who shared a vision, a worshiping community, and as we sit in these pews here in this space, we're recipients of some hard work that was done a long, long time ago. And what we do this year, I hope, will make a difference for generations yet to come by the way we express our love and our faith as we continue to share in this community of faith. How might we extravagantly, generously make a difference in the world through the way we live, through the way we love? Well, we have an altar call this morning. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to have a time to have a blessing of the animals because it's uh, St. Francis of Assisi who is kind of an animal lover. And it comes up and his uh, birthday was in October. And so in October we're going to try to do that and invite people. I've done it before. What I discovered works real well is to have all the cat people sit on one side and <laughs> the dog people sit on the other. It took a couple of years to figure that out, but it worked out just fine. And then somebody comes in with an iguana or a fish tank. But, you know, you just do whatever you can and then have an opportunity to bless the animals. So it'll be a Saturday night. We won't do it on Sunday morning, but we'll do an opportunity for us just you know, because people have those pets that are so near and dear to them. And we will bless them and bless their pets. But think about it. How might we bless people this week? What might we do to go out of our way to share the love of God? Somebody out there might be having a very bad day. 
if you don't say something, if you don't smile, if you don't have a kind word, or if you don't offer to help, or whatever, you may go from bad to worse. But you can make a difference. You can turn a world around for someone by sharing the love of Christ. Jesus knew that. He taught the disciples. But not only will that affect the one person, but it'll affect others who notice, others who see, others who experience how it is you live your life of love. Be that. Do that. Share that this week. Share your love with God. For all that God is and all that God does in your life. Share your love with your family members and your friends, and even strangers as well. As I reflected upon this text and wrote these words this week. Listen and hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. To us, what does the scripture tell? What word is to be done? Love God with our heart, soul, and strength. Likewise, love our neighbor. This is the height and breadth and length of our holy labor. This is the law above all laws, the one we must obey. No matter others' sins or flaws, love everyone today. Forgive and love yourself also, for God has so loved you. God sent Jesus that you might know, as Christ loved, you can too. Alleluia. Amen. We take time to lift up our prayers as a community of faith. I don't know who's writing down prayers today. Has somebody got that job? All right, Debrine's got it. Thank you. But again, if you would share, and I always like to start with joys because we do have them, and I can just share the joys of the beauty of the earth and the opportunity to see it from 4,000 feet this week on the balloon trip. But it was a joy. It was a blessing. But how about the rest of you? What else? I would just like to celebrate all of your grandparents today. Grandparents Day. My grandparents. We're not grandparents yet, but we're really grateful that our children still have my parents. So happy grandparents day. Yes, and we all have grandparents, right? Hopefully that uh, we can celebrate uh, as well today. Thank you for that. Any other joys? That's it? Oh man, what a week. Oh, okay, thank you. Cooler weather. Cooler weather. A sense that fall is is in the air. Fall is in the air. Thank you, yes. Yeah. I'm being thankful this, this week. My mom took a fall at her church last Sunday, which I didn't know about until Thursday night. But I'm very thankful she went down on her hip and it's not broken. Okay. It's a severe muscle sprain and bruising. So, very thankful. Right. At Could have been worse. Fall. Oh, boy. Thank you for that. Yes. What else, Larry? Char and I had the opportunity this past week to go see a movie, which we don't usually do. Okay. It was called The Forge. And it's by the Ken, the Kendricks brothers. Kendricks brothers. Mm -hmm. They made uh, Fireproof and uh, War Room and, and different movies like that. It was wonderful. Okay. If you have a chance, please go see it. If a group of us would like to get together and meet up there and watch it, we'd go back and see it again. All right. Yeah. All right. So, it's yeah, I got a nod house. in the back. So, yeah, talk about it during coffee time. Maybe it's we'll at do the warehouse. Room. Okay. It's at the warehouse. It's a, it's a bigger so, place. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Charlotte. Just the joys of going going to your sermon, the um, the joy of community. Um, I have been very blessed over the years, but I've just really, really noticed it in the last <coughs> few weeks. Um, the way that we all support each other. I've been blessed to be the recipient of uh, folks taking care of me and to also be able to offer care to others yes. and just to be in community. Thank you. And I love that. And we will continue to do that for you here Thank during you. your transition. Thank you. Somebody else had a hand up. Yes, Don. Appreciated your message on just being uh, after being in the Boundary Waters. Um, we were in a park. It was 4.4 million acres, and we could we were just being, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Glad you had that experience. Yes. Yes. What else? I just wanted to let everybody know, uh, and it's a it's a joy. Dad is fine. He's not here today. Uh, he's feeling good, but he just felt like he needed to sleep in this morning. Oh, just be. There you just go. Just be. That's yeah. right. So, <laughs> prayers that he continues. He's doing great. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Somebody else? Yes. It's just being there. Birth month. You can't do it in one day. Come on, That's you get a whole right. month. All month. Right. Well, there probably are also some concerns that you wanted to lift up since you've heard some needs. We're aware of a school shooting here at the beginning of the school year already. Uh, I sure got a call yesterday from my sister, my cousin's son, a young man, committed suicide on Friday night. Um, and it's just devastating on the family. I called my aunt last night. That's the grandmother. Um, and she's got a strong faith, and, and we've talked before about various things. Life has happened. But uh, she said the grandkids are just having a hard time with siblings and cousins. So prayers for Seth was his name and his family. What else we all lift up? Yes. It's too late, is right. Thank you. Somebody else, please. Uh, like uh, prayers for my daughter Heidi, who uh, they discovered a mass in her kidney and bladder, and they're uh, just deciding what it is. And, uh, so prayers that it's not anything drastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Prayers for my cousin Chuck, who is currently hospitalized. I don't have any more specific information on him. Okay. Inshallah? I think this will be lifted up at every service today, but continuing prayers for um, the Stein family, and particularly um, Michelle's mom, Kathy, um, as she's just facing some really health, health struggles. Real struggles. <laughs> Yeah, it's been more downs than up. She's been in the hospital now for over a month. And, you know, Michelle was originally going to be here for the start of Sunday school as our Christian uh, children's coordinator, but, but mom needed her, so she's still in Philly this weekend. Um, so please keep up with family in prayer. Yes, Kay. First of the young lady that usually gives into my day off for the day 33 straight. She has been sick for over a month. She was in the hospital last week. The news is not the best, but we're hoping that she will be okay. Okay. <laughs> Put your hand lift you. You get extra uh, work to do. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you come to church when you come to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, there may be maybe other things that we do have on our hearts, but maybe we just don't want to share aloud. Let's take a moment in silence and just come before God and let us pray. Holy God, today we come and we bring these, our joys and our concerns, hear these, all of our prayers as we pray.
Oh, holy God, we have joys and we have concerns. We give you thanks for your love and for the blessings that you bestow upon us. For you have created us and given us life, given us opportunities to experience life, full life, a whole life. Help us to live that life this week. For the many blessings and the things for which we give joy and give thanks this morning, aloud or silently, God, we give thanks. When we come and our hearts are broken, the hurts and the pains of the world in the midst of wars, shootings, refugees, the struggles that are going on in our midst, in our families, in our friendships, among our co-workers and neighbors, in our world. Gracious God, be with each one. But help us, O oh God, to be there for each one that we can be there. That we can make a difference just by how we interact and how we live and how we share your love. Help us to be the sermon that gets preached this week just by the way we share our love for you and our love for our neighbor. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And so at this time, I'm going to ask a couple of ushers to come and help us take our morning offering. Again, if you've got your cards filled out, you can place those in the plate as they're going by and we'll gather them up and have to an insert next week. Thank you. Put them to get past you first. They're taking the offering. Would you stand right up here and face the congregation? Sunday school teachers for the children and the children to come in. But as we do that, I just want to say that we are thankful for the teachers and the helpers. And, and so we have youth that are up in the loft who are learning while we are in here worshiping. We have children in the Sunday school rooms who are learning while we are in here worshiping. We also have some adults who are in the conference room who are learning and, and doing some things to grow deeper in their faith. But as uh, hopefully the Allison and the children are making their way this way, we'll have an opportunity to greet them and to thank them. Are they coming? Teachers? All right. So they're not here, but they're here in spirit, right? We're going to be in the other classroom. Well, I want to say thank you to the youth who are here today. Thank you, Lynn, for being a teacher and leader for the youth up in the loft and for others who are offering their times and gifts. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunities that we offer to children and to youth and adults to grow in their faith. We give you thanks for the teachers and the leaders, the supporters, the helpers. Bless us as a community of faith as we help children and youth grow in their faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you guys want to stay and just have a seat somewhere, you can have the good chairs right, right down front. I don't know. But anyway, we have one final hymn we're going to sing. I think it's Seek Ye First, right? Oh, we have a prayer of dedication for the offering. 
Charlotte. Will you please join in the presentation? There's one. Thank you. Lord, <laughs> align our hearts with yours as we offer our gifts to you. May our motives be pure and our intentions be in harmony with your will. May our gifts be blessed by you, multiplied by you, and used in love. Amen and amen. And now we'll sing CP first. Thank you.